Hi guys, so in this video uh, I'm going to talk about the setup on a GT12, um, what you can change, what it does to the car and what we tend to use. Setup's one of them things that it's almost more opinion than fact a lot of the time, but what I'm going to talk about is what I've found setting the car up, uh, things that we change commonly, things that we tend to leave alone and uh, what effect it has on the car. So we'll start with camber. Um, Generally, set and forget. Uh, never ever use positive camber. The top of the wheel should always be further in than the bottom of the wheel. Uh, generally, set the car to about one degree. Um, if you go to more camber, so for example, one and a half degrees, two degrees, you should get more steering when the car's the more the car rolls because all you do is increase in the contact patch. Uh, generally, I'd never go to more than two degrees on a GT12, uh, and never less than half a degree. But like I said, generally set it to one and leave it there. Um, caster, again, is another one that we don't really touch. Uh, it's built as per kit, which I think is six or seven degrees. Um, basically running more caster uh, will give you more initial steering, less steering coming out the corner. So that's what I found anyway. But again, cambers, uh, sorry, caster is one that spoke to a lot of people. People tend to have different opinions of, of what it does to the car. So, just for clarity, caster angle is, if you can see the side of the car there, I don't know how good it is in the shot, but it's how angled the hubs are backwards on the whole front end. Uh, it basically just changes the angle of the wheel the more you add steering. Um, so that's another thing you can set. Toe, again, obviously, we always run zero degrees at the back. You can't change it on a GT12. It's fixed because it's a fixed axle. Um, at the front, so your toe angle, if you imagine my hands are wheels, is this angle here, uh, the front poking in or out. Never ever run toe in or a lot of toe out. Uh, I usually set mine to zero, so the car's neutral. Um, I'd never run more than half a degree of toe out. All it's gonna do is basically give you more initial steering, better turn in, but it's also gonna make the car want to wander and be hard to drive on the straight. Toe in does the opposite, makes it, uh, the car wanna almost drive into itself in a straight line uh, on the straight but it'll make the car push and feel strange in the corner. Um, so the one thing we probably change the most uh, setup wise on GT12 is the springs. So you have five springs on a GT12. You've got your front springs on your kingpins here, your side springs here that uh, control your pivot and your bump spring on the back here. So generally, if I'm going to a new track, I always start at silver front, silver side and nickel rear. It's almost like a middle ground at the front and side and hard on the rear. Um, so we'll start by talking about the front springs and what they do. So a harder front spring is going to make the car want to roll less, which is going to at the front. So that's going to give you less steering. So going to a gold front spring will make the car easier to drive, but give you less steering and less rotation. However, it can sometimes give the car a little bit more initial with the front end of the car being stiffer. However, generally, the uh, rule to go off is the harder the front spring, the less steering you're going to have. Like I said, I'm usually at silver, which is a middle ground. Um, if I'm struggling, if the car's under steering, I'll go to a black front. And if the car's hard to drive and over steering, I'll go to a gold front. Um, so the next spring is the side spring here. Um, again, I usually start with silver. A softer spring will give you probably more rear grip. A little bit less steering so that would be your black spring and a gold spring which is one up from silver would give you more uh, more steering and less rear grip very very rarely use a gold side uh, never a nickel generally that's in a really high bite track uh, where you're not sort of worrying about rear traction a black side spring can be really useful for low grip tracks uh, so if you're at a track where you know maybe hasn't been driven on for a while or the carpet's low grip it might be worth going to a black side spring to stop the rear of the car uh, sliding too much make the car easier to drive uh, slightly less steering but again start with silver almost always and then the rear of the car um, usually the softest we ever use is a nickel um, but sometimes we use the new red dot rear which is what's on the car currently uh, that's been released by Schumacher recently which is a much harder spring and what that does is sort of slow down and limit the weight transfer of the car. 
So when you're lifting off and turning into a corner, often with a softer rear spring, the car will turn in harder, the back end will slide and the car will want to over rotate. So this has a few knock on effects really. One of them being making the car harder to drive when you turn in. Um, and the second being uh, sliding the rear tyres. The problem is if you slide the rear tyres too much, you can kill the grip and you'll probably find that Halfway for a run, the car will almost become impossible to drive because you'll have so little rear traction. So that's why we tend to go from the nickel to the red dot rear. But the opposite applies if you've got the red dot rear on and you're driving and you're trying to turn into a corner and you can't get the car to turn in or rotate, it can be beneficial to go to a nickel rear just to get a little bit more steering. Um, so the next thing which sort of works with the springs is your dampers. So, obviously, you have your centre damper, your two side dampers, and damper oil on your front kingpins. So, we'll start with centre damper. Uh, as a general rule, I build a car with 30,000 weight oil in there. Uh, that seems to give a good balance for most tracks. Very rarely go thinner than that. However, we do often go to 50,000. So, the effect of this is uh, slowing down weight transfer. So, it's similar to going down uh, to a harder rear spring. It'll give you slightly less off power steering with a thicker oil, but also make the car a little bit more stable. And it's also better on a bumpy track to run the thicker damper oil. Um, but yeah, like I say, I tend to only run 30 or 50. Um, so onto the side dampers here. So the effect of this is again to, to do with the rate of weight transfer. So as a starting point, 12 or 15k is usually really good. Generally, the higher grip the track is, the harder the oil you want to go to, which will help with weight transfer because it will tend to mean that the back of the car will roll less through uh, sort of fast chicanes, that kind of corner. However, it can make the car slide more and have slightly less rear grip. So if you go to a softer damper oil, the car will tend to be a bit more stable, uh, especially in high-speed corners, but the car can feel sluggish to change direction through chicanes and uh, anywhere sort of where you're doing a fast change of direction. Like I said, a good starting point is 30,000 centre and 12,000 side. And then you have the front dampers. So, uh, very, very rare that I run anything other than 12,000 on the front kingpins. If the car seems to feel really numb and disconnected, then it can be worth going to a thinner oil like a, an 8 or a 10k, or even no oil at all, which will tend to give a slightly more front bite, but make the car edgier and harder to drive. If it's super high bite, uh, somewhere like MB models for example where the grip's really high it's worth going to a thicker oil so maybe 15k or 20k maybe in extreme cases 30k um, it'll just make the, bit, the front of the car a little bit more numb a little bit more uh, stable and easier to drive and that's it really for your dampers um, the next thing the, something I very rarely touch is the roll centre of the car so, on my car here, uh, I don't know how well you can see on the camera, but in here, it has the adjustable rear roll center. However, um, I haven't ran it anywhere other than kit position recently. Um, I know at our local club, people have experimented with other positions of raising the roll center and found it not to be any better. So, times where you might want to go to the high roll center is in a really high grip track. It'll make the car more aggressive, want to steer more, um, generally a bit livelier. But again, by doing this, you're also making the car harder to drive. It's one of them. It does different things on different tracks. Uh, you sort of have to experiment with it and see what you find and what you feel. It's not too hard to change. It's only a couple of washes under the side links and the washes in the roll centre itself. So it's not too difficult to do. Um, again, next thing would be ride height. Uh, so we're going to do videos anyway on how to set all this stuff, so your ride height, droop, that kind of thing. But generally, ride height um, on a very smooth track will tend to run the 3.2mm front, 3.4mm rear. You generally want to run a tiny bit of rake like that, only by 0.2. Uh, you never want the car higher at the front, because you're just going to get understeer. So generally, if it's a really smooth, nice track, uh, so often like sports hole floors, you'll run the car at 3.2, 3.4, maybe if you're pushing it, uh, or it's conveniently tyre size, 3mm and 3.2, but I'd never go lower than that. Um, 
if you're running a track that's got some sort of slightly aggressive bumps, bigger bumps, maybe like MB models at the end of the straight, I know a lot of people notice that bump, it's beneficial to run a slightly higher ride height, so 3.4 mil front, 3.6 mil rear is really common, um, that's what I tend to set the car to, and maybe in extreme cases 3.6 front and 3.8 rear, but again, I wouldn't go higher than that, I'd find other ways to sort of deal with the problem, because at that point you're changing your roll centre, you're changing your centre of gravity and it's going to unsettle the car a bit more, not something you really want to do. Um, the last common uh, area where we tune the car is tyres, so our local club we run control tyres, there's no choice in compound or what we use, the 40 shore fronts and 37 shore rears I believe, the, the con uh, sorry 42 and 37, the contact control tyres, um, it's generally a, a harder tyre is going to give you less grip, so running a stagger like that, a harder front is going to give you less steering, so you can tune that out in the rest of the car. Um, however, at nationals or anywhere else racing, like at the Worlds, we generally run the same compound front to rear, whether that be T35, T35, Q40, Q40, maybe A-foam, S-foam, Zen guys, whatever, whatever compound you're running. Um, sometimes you might want to run a harder front tyre if it's super high bite, but personally I never have uh, when I've had the choice of what compound I can run. So you then have the shore rating of the tyre, so in a low grip track generally you want to run a softer compound tyre, so we'll use T-Foam for example, um, on a sort of a general club racing track where it's maybe not super high grip you'll want to run T-35, whereas if the grip comes up really high, uh, the super high bite, you'll want to move to maybe a T-40, uh, this is because a softer tyre in super high grip, one, is going to lead to traction rolling, it's going to make the car hard to drive, and two, it can often be slower to run a softer tyre if the car is digging in because the, the tyre is so soft you're going to scrub a lot of speed and struggle to carry corner speed whereas a harder tyre will tend to carve through the track more if that makes sense. So that's why it's good to have sort of a selection of tyres so you've got your T35s, your T40s or your, well generally we just ran Q40 everywhere but I mean you can use harder, softer, it just depends on the track. It's worth trying uh, a few, see what you find to be better. It's all preference. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for setup, really. Um, the stuff that we tune a lot. I mean, droop, you can tune it, but personally, I just set the rear droop on this screw here to 1.2 mil, or so anywhere between 1 and 1.5 is okay. And the front, uh, very, very little droop, never more than sort of half a mil. I think at the minute I'm set to have no front droop. And personally, I never really change that. That just stays as is. Um, oh, yeah. Last thing you can tune on, this is more of a, a tuning aid on the CC rather than the original Atom Pro, is your weight. So uh, hopefully you can see in the shot here how much movement there is for the battery for weight. So you can go, it's probably about 8 mil. Uh, you can move the battery forwards and backwards like so. It makes a big difference to the car. Uh, it's probably one of the things that we change the most because it's such an easy thing to change. As a general rule, moving your LiPo forwards is going to make the car easier to drive, less edgy, you can have a little bit less rotation but it's going to be a lot more pleasant to drive. Um, so you often want to do this if your car is a bit too edgy or has too much steering. Moving the LiPo backwards will do the opposite. Uh, sorry, charge is going off again. Um, moving the LiPo backwards is going to give you more rotation more initial steering but make the car harder to drive and can be quite difficult. I tend to run as a starting point my LiPo about 3 or 4 millimetres back from the very front and then I can tune it from there. Um, so yeah, that's about it for, for your setup on your car. Uh, if you've got any questions let me know. Thanks.